The eyes may be the windows to the soul, but the hands are the windows to the intent. Today's video is brought to you by the generosity of New Bold Targets. New Bold Targets are self-sealing reactive polymer targets that act like steel targets for training and practice, but are safer than steel. They allow bullets to pass completely through the target without ricochet or lead splatter. Check out their links in the description and thank them for bringing us today's video. Hi everyone, this is John with today's active self-protection lesson out of Maybrook, New York in the United States. Here we see an officer involved incident where a domestic blows up with bad consequences. Make sure to go read the news story on this one. The actual tenant of this apartment is the recent ex-girlfriend of the guy that we're going to encounter in here. She has asked them to evict him and get him out and he's barricaded himself in. Um, and, and there's some significant backstory on all of that. So the officers have been invited in by the tenant and by the landlord, and this guy has barricaded himself in and they know that he could be dangerous. Now we have audio from the badge cam on this one, so let's listen in, then we'll come back and we'll learn some lessons. Anthony, let me see your hands. Where you at, dude? Where you at? Anthony, where are your hands? Step out. Step out. I got him. Step out. Anthony, step out of there. Step out, bro. All right, you got to step out. Step out. We're coming anyway. Okay? Just cover him, please. Go to lethal. I'm coming either way. I'm good. He just shot himself. Did he? I think so. Get the chief out. He's out. He's out. He's out. He just did himself, I think. Uh, Alright, Push it back out. I heard him fall. Just back out. Back out. Yeah. This. News story says they had a three hour standoff and the bad guy ended up being found dead in his apartment. Tough stuff all the way around. and We hate to see officers get put in these kind of predicaments. If you wanna get better with your self-defense, consider joining us on our Facebook page as well. Facebook.com slash active self-protection. I share links there, videos, stories, ideas, pictures, all kinds of stuff to help all of us think about our self-defense in our social media feed. Today's video's got a bunch of great lessons, including the difficulties that officers face, particularly when they're dealing with somebody who wants to commit suicide by cop. Secondly, I want to talk about clearing structures and how hard that can be and why I don't recommend it for most people. And I want to talk about verbal judo and when it's useful and when it's not. So first of all, I want to say the great respect that I have for law enforcement officers. And, and I mean, these guys are in a small department. This is a small town, you know, I guess about 75 miles north of New York City, 3,000 people. Small department, the chief of police is on this call, which is a pretty significant issue. Most chiefs of police aren't doing that, but in small departments, everybody does everything, right? And these guys have to get in here. So as a, as a private citizen, as a CCW holder, non-law enforcement officer, you probably won't be called to do these kinds of things. Uh, but you know, law enforcement, this is what they do for a living and they have to take these kinds of risks. Now let's think about, uh, you know, this idea of clearing this house. As they come in there, they know there very well could be a threat. And so now they gotta think about where the potential threats are. And I'm telling you friends, uh, now of course, we won't do most of this coming in from the outside as non-law enforcement, but you may very well have to do this in your home or in your place of business. At least then you'll know the layout a whole lot better. But this is something you absolutely need to be trained in. It's not, you know, a first order of magnitude of importance, but it is important for you to know, wait a minute, what are my risks? What are my dangers? How do I properly do this to minimize my exposure and to maximize my ability to protect myself and my loved ones? Room clearing and house clearing is definitely something that you need to learn in class. 
I do notice as well that this officer does a very good job of maintaining distance from his concealment and his cover. Notice he's not hugged up right up against the wall. That indicates to me that he is highly trained. Uh, I see people that hug cover all the time on narrated videos, on badge camps and surveillance footage, and this officer not doing that tells me he's done this a time or two, probably been shot up in Sims training enough times that he was broken to that habit, and that's a very, very good thing. Notice as well that he is doing what we call slicing the pie, finding a new space, taking that space and holding that space and not ducking back in. Excellent tactics there. And, and he finally has made contact with our perp. Now, the thing that I want to pay attention to here is as we finally start to see him here, you can see one hand of the guy. You notice that we can see the guy's right hand, but not his left. We say this all the time at active self-protection, that the eyes are the windows of the soul, but the hands are the windows of the intent. And he says to him, let me see your hands. And we never see the guy's left hand. I'm telling you, if people will not show you their hands, that is a bad sign. Even as a CCW holder, if I'm managing an unknown contact, I will ask somebody who's got their hands in their pocket, hey man, can I see your hands real quick? And these kinds of things, because the hands are where the danger comes from. You gotta be able to see their hands. The fact that he won't show him the hand, is an incredible danger sign. Next, I love the fact that the officer uses his pistol mounted light incredibly effectively here. Now that's gonna create a significant photonic barrier that the bad guy can't see through, and that's a good thing. Now notice it's daytime, it's not like you know a crazy unlit place, but still that, that very bright light is very useful to illuminate it better so you can see them better, but they can't see you better. Now, of course, I don't necessarily think that it's necessary for CCW holders to keep one on their CCW gun, but on a home defense gun, absolutely, and all law enforcement officers for the reason that we see right here. Now, you're seeing it here, the officer in the, the first walkthrough is talking to this guy, hey man, let's talk, come on, come on out, let's walk through this, let's talk about these things. Excellent work there, there's not shooting going on right now and that's a good thing, and so he tries to get the guy to come out, but he does recognize, hey man, we are coming in there. So you gotta know when there's an end to that. Now, he's gonna holster up because he wants to use his less lethal. He's trying to get this guy without the le use of lethal force, and he says, look man, I am coming in, and asks the other guy to get up and on target with his firearm, and we see, uh, not the person that we see just to the right of the camera, but one off camera who's got definitely got his pistol up and on target as well. But then he says, look, I'm coming in with less lethal. Somebody who's gonna commit suicide by cop, they recognize, wait, I'm gonna get taken into custody and that may well be their sign to go. And so you gotta know when everything is at an end, that it's time to flip the switch and you gotta defend yourself and everyone else. And unfortunately, the bad guy gets the initiative here as well and shoots the chief of police in the shoulder. He did make a full recovery. Now we see here what the officer is doing. It's called firing for effect. You see him reload here because he's gone through his first magazine of 11. And I think he might have had a little problem with his slide stop lever there because of the gloves. Again, if you're gonna wear gloves, if that's something that's happening, it's you know winter time or whatever, make sure you've practiced with it so that you're doing the best you can. Of course, this is under incredible deadly stress. So we're gonna see a degradation of our skills, but totally okay here. He's going after and going to get up there and fire a bunch. This is again what we call firing for effect. He knows that he has backup officers with him and he has to put that guy down and so he is firing into that space just to try to get the guy to go down and not be shooting at him or the other officers and goes through actually two magazines. Now I will say this, I have never seen a firefight in a CCW encounter that required more rounds than what was in the gun. I've never seen a reload actually affect a CCW gunfight. That said, I've seen it affect many law enforcement gunfights. So those reloading skills for law enforcement officers, incredibly important, not unimportant for CCW, but not a high level of importance that we work on those in our secondary and tertiary skills levels. Now you notice here that his other fellow officer is off to the right and he's kind of hanging out around there. Gosh, would I would I really like to have more firepower looking down that hallway, but I get it, man. Uh, you know, emotionally that's very difficult to step in where you know somebody was just shooting at you. But props to the officer who's got his gun up and is willing to do that. Then you gotta make sure, okay, what's our best bet here? And these officers are going to retreat. They weren't going in there looking for a gunfight and they're like, look, I'm not going and clearing that by myself. Let me let the SWAT guys do that. And as a CCW holder, I think there's some value there of saying the same thing. Look, if I don't have to go in there and threaten myself, if my family's not in there or whatever, I may want to retreat as well. I may want to just get the heck out of there and call the cops and let them deal with it. And of course, go help the chief deal with his gunshot wound, get the first aid skills on him and go. Many things done right here. I think this officer that we see on his badge cam was a professional. I think he did a whole lot right. I think that, uh, you know, grateful that the, the chief made a full recovery and these officers covered their ASP.